We just broke news. Usually I just break wind, but today... I was wondering what that smell was. No, no, I just broke news. <laughs> Although some of my news really stinks to high heaven. Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where remarkable guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with Ron Perlman. Ron? Yes, that's you. Hi. <laughs> you ready? You ready I'm to not surf? sure, am I? You Let's are, see. you are. Let's, Let's see, what, see what's on. Let's I'm, see what's I'm willing on. to see if you are. I'm ready. Let's go. So, this is during my Tony Curtis phase. <laughs> Tony Curtis. <laughs> okay, so this movie has no real dialogue. How did this come to be? Did it involve dialogue during the audition process? How did you convince them that you were the Neanderthal for the role. I'd never done a movie before. And I'm, so I finally get a meeting with a French filmmaker. Right. I have no idea who he is or what he's done. So I went into this meeting thinking, you know, oh, Jesus Christ, you know. And I... You were a little smug. I was, I was, no, smug doesn't even begin to cover it. I was so disrespectful. And because the guy was French, he thought it was great, oh. like, you know, because, you know, they're all about abuse, self-abuse, abuse of others. What he was doing was he was grooving on my forehead and my deep-set eyes and going, he is so Neanderthal. And there it was. And there it was. Let's ride on into the next clip, shall okay, we? Okay, fine. All right. That's not me. <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> but that's you. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, this is a seminal moment in me. Yeah, this and role won you the Golden Globes. I still think that was a mistake. I think that they called out the wrong name. No. You know, like they did that with Moonlight and... and, and, and La La Land. Land? So when it got picked up for, um, the, for, for Beyond the Pilot, for a full I, release. I, I got very nervous. You did? <laughs> did you think to <laughs> yourself, wait, what have I gotten myself into? Mm, this could be a career killer. But it wasn't. It was a career maker. It, it actually was a career. I didn't, after, after Beauty and the Beast um, went off the air, I didn't work for three years. Are you serious? Because nobody, nobody, you know, they, they, they considered it a one-off. How many hours in the makeup chair did you spend trying to get this look together? And that would become your home away from home, the makeup room, over the course of your career. It, it established the long-standing four-hour rule. What's the four-hour rule? Uh, it took me four hours to become the Beast, four hours to become Hellboy, four hours to become the guy from Name of the Rose, and four hours to become the guy from... Um, there was another movie in there that I did that required four hours, but... Goodness. Yeah, they, they're all four hours. I don't know why it just works out that way. No matter who's doing it, who designs it, how much you're putting on, how much you're taking on, it's four hours. Okay, next project. And it's really weird that you have this clip up next, which is Kronos. Mm -hmm. Which broke, which is Guillermo del Toro's first film. He was only 29 when he made this. Kronos was the first job I got after those, that three year period where I couldn't get a job after Beauty and the Beast. And it was due to Guillermo del Toro um, having seen a lot of the monsters that I'd played in. So you've said this script was like unlike anything you'd ever read, but what about it in particular blew your mind? Guillermo's obsession with, with the eternal life aspect of why the vampire, even as, as folklore came to be, is what drove him to make the movie. Did you have any inkling that he would go on to be one of the most important and celebrated directors and filmmakers of his, of his generation? Yeah, I was, I was convinced. You knew. And I, just, just by looking at his framing, I, I thought, look, oh my God, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a witness to some very important event. That's beautiful. Mm. All right, next up. This is fun. I know, right? Oh, check this out. See, I could have got the ball if it wasn't movies. <laughs> I can't like, bet you but I, She was supposed to like make me look like like no, like a dwarf. Play basketball. I know some other indoor sports. Okay, that now, happened. was that real or was that movie magic? That happened. Yeah, that really happened. Show. That happened. Okay, walk me through this. How many takes? Did she nail it the first time? Tell me the story. First time. No. 
nothing but net, as you saw it. No, no camera tricks, no nothing. And I watched her uh, training for this sequence. They were rehearsing this, this little thing for a month. She never made it once. The camera's rolling. I'm in the shot where she's walking away and she does this and it goes in. And I'm watching it go in and I went, ah! <laughs> like this. And they yelled, cut. And everybody on the set was white. Like, instead of being celebratory, they were like, holy f Ron just ruined this magical thing. Oh, no. Because my, I was in the shot and- And you're so no, happy there, for her. There was nothing to cut to. And uh, they played it back about a hundred times to, to see whether they could like get the editing scissors in there before I blew it, which they ultimately did. Welcome back to Couch Surfing. I'm still here with Ron Perlman. Ron, shall we see what's on? Let's see what's on. All right. Shall we? Shall we? First of all, when Guillermo was getting ready to do Hellboy 2, and the script started to circulate, and he left out this delicious little tidbit that at one point, Abe Sapien and Hellboy were gonna get drunk on Tecate beer and sing Barry Manilow. Um, nobody believed it. <laughs> and, cause like, who does that? Who in, does that? In a superhero comic book movie, right? Know, but it's so genius. And it's probably my favorite moment in the, in the two films. Guillermo was one of the first to truly see you as a leading man. I mean, had you wanted to step into that lane before? Because you were a successful character actor. I said to him from the get-go, that's, that's a great idea, and God bless you, I love you for even, you know, entertaining the idea, but it'll never happen. And sure enough, for seven years, he would go to these meetings at these studios, and he would say Ron Perlman and they would go <laughs> like this and he never got the movie made. And then we did Blade Two, and Blade Two opened it to like $40 million on the first weekend and everybody wanted to, 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 to do Guillermo's next movie. And he said to himself, if I'm ever gonna get Hellboy done with Ron, it's gonna be this week. Mm. And sure enough, somebody said to him, how do I get in the Guillermo del Toro business? And he said, well, I really want to do this movie, Hellboy. And they say, okay, any conditions? He goes, yeah, Ron Perlman. They go, hmm, okay. There was a loyalty aspect to it, but there was also this, like, he was convinced, this is the way I want to make the movie, and if I have to make the movie the way you want to make it, I'm not going to make it at all. Oh, wow, that's powerful. We underestimated Zabel, the league's reach. Sons of Anarchy. Okay, so how did you become a part of this world? Do you have a Harley? Did you have to learn how to ride? Walk no and yes. Way? No and yes. Which is the no and which is the yes? I don't have a Harley. And you had to learn how to ride. And I did have to learn how to ride. What was that like for you? It was not good. <laughs> Were there any injuries? Constantly. And yet you're here in one piece. Well, I do have a prosthetic leg, but I won't mention which one. And these are not my... These guys aren't gangsters. They're money, smart, and connected. <laughs> Next <laughs> clip. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to be in the makeup chair oh, for on. this one. No. It's all right? digitally done. I'm really glad I, 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 I did mocap once. Mm -hmm. I'm not eager to do it again because I've now done it once. And, you know, it was, it was and if you're going to do it once, to do it on a Harry Potter-esque kind of uh, a scale, it was cool. Did J.K. Rowling ever come to set? I met her at the premiere in New York. Nice. Mm -hmm. Love it. She big dogged me. She, bi she big dogged you? And you know what a big dog is, right? Is when somebody's shaking hands with you and they're, and they're looking at something else. How you doing? How you doing? She did not. I don't believe doing? that story. I swear to God. I she, don't believe that. She big dog me. No way. I'm telling you. She's the nicest person on the planet. Not to me. <laughs> Next up. I told you I want to take you out of here right now. Okay, so you go from playing a goblin gangster to Asher, a more traditional gangster. So Asher is um, coming out December 7th in uh, limited run theaters and video on demand, and et cetera, et cetera. Asher is uh, the very first movie that my own production company, which I established about five years ago. This one is kind of like a valedictory because it's 
a 68-year-old dude who at one point was the badassest of the badass yeah. and who's dealing with the fact that his best years are behind him and he's in a position where there's no uh, elegant way to exit. Through happenstance, randomly meets this girl who is as solitary and has and is got a, a worldliness and a sadness and who also has made a decision that she's going to go it alone and they come together in this kind of feeling out, beautiful, subtle way. They never kiss in the film, but it's, it's a beautiful love story. So there it is, that's Asher. And there it is, that's couch surfing. That's couch surfing. That's couch surfing. That's how you do that. That's how I do that. I'm not big dogging you, I'm looking no, you right in the man, eye. I, f I feel you. Thank you I so much you. for being here. I feel you.